As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. This episode is brought to you by Blizzard. Play Diablo 4 free during the open beta weekend. Only you can stand in the way of the forces of hell. Play free March 24th to 26th and pre purchase for early access. Journey through the entire first act. Battle up to level 25 as all five classes. Adventure with your friends in four player co op. Descend into hell early during the open beta. Pre purchase Diablo 4 now. All right, my loves. Hello, it is Lala Kent, aka Send It to Daryl. And I have my best friend here, Katie Maloney. Hi. Wait, what is that truck is that I see rolling around? <laughs> or I saw your I saw your Instagram. Is that that's like a real truck rolling around? The merch <laughs> team was like, what do you feel? How do you feel about this? And I was like, that sounds amazing. Oh, I love it. And I love that it was the truck because it just goes so perfectly with the fact that it's like a meme and to see this like little hot rod truck rolling around Los Angeles, it's so funny. Oh my gosh. It's zooming around today. So today we're recording this on Monday, so it won't be zooming around on Wednesday when this comes out, but I'm hoping some of you see it. It should also be like an ad for like legal counsel if you need yeah. if you need a lawyer call Daryl <laughs> just have like Daryl's face on there like with like two thumbs up I think Daryl is like what have you done to me <laughs> I think he seemed hyped about it though I did ask him by the way I said Daryl this is really hitting and I didn't realize like can I please make merch and he said as long as you send me one and they put in an order for like six. Oh, oh amazing I know so he, no really he like exciting. he like a, he's like a, a lawyer celebrity on like a website a, a lawyer website I know I saw it, it was really cute, cute <laughs> Daryl's a savage though yeah. right Daryl's the shit yeah. I love him um yes we're recording today but this will air on Wednesday it's my baby's second birthday <gasps> yes I cannot believe she's already two it's very strange to me because I go from like acting a damn fool on Vanderpump Rules to acting a damn fool on social media to put the phone away and I am like a different human being. Like I have mm-hmm. to raise a person. And some people would say like, I don't know about that. But I feel like I'm doing an okay job. You are. You're you doing came, amazing. Thanks, babe. And you came to her birthday party. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was wild. There was like live music. There was cake. There was Panda Express. Panda, yeah, Panda Express was hitting different. <laughs> we fucked up the Panda Express, all of us. Oh, we all fucked it up. I had some low mean. Yes, it was good. And the Beat Buds, by the way, were the band. I think they're all over the U.S. They've got like multiple groups, but they're so good. They're so good. I feel like I was in a nightclub. Yeah, <laughs> I might have them for my next party. They bring like instruments. It's very like, you know, crowd involvement. Yeah, It was crowd involvement. <laughs> but like as I was talking to the other parents, I was like, is it loud in here? Yeah. Should we turn it down? It was super loud. It was so loud. <laughs> Did you see Jenna? So Jenna, who used to be a producer on our show, her son gets so buck wild to oh, that stuff. He, no, I saw him afterwards. He was beat red, <laughs> just sweating. I was like, did he just run a marathon? Like, dang, he goes hard. He goes hard at the birthdays. He goes real hard at the birthdays. Mm-hmm. I have to be honest. The biggest reason why I got live music was because I saw him at Hartford's party and he loved it so much that I was like, he's yeah. coming. I have to have the music. Yeah, it was a hit at Hartford's. <laughs> Okay, so obviously you and I know the drill, Katie. We can't discuss certain things, but I did ask the Graham some questions. Okay. We don't have to answer them all. Mm -hmm. But I do want to ask you, what is your prep like for reunion day? On the actual day we're leading up to. Like, let's just say the week, because it does take a week to get mentally prepared, I feel. So what is the week like? And then the actual day, how do you get amped up? Even, like, aesthetically, how do you get yourself looking snatched as fuck? You would think I'd do more. I don't know. I, I well, this this year I'm using a stylist. This past year, like, I've, I've never actually even used a stylist, but I, I, working with Rima, who's amazing, who's across the hall. Yeah, she's office here. Same um, but I used her for BravoCon. I'm obsessed with her. So I already got my alpha picked out. So that's, like, that takes a huge weight off, trying to, like, figure out what to wear. And then it's like, yeah, get a little spray tan on so you got a good glow. And Mm -hmm. then, I don't know, try to like 
listen, you can only do so much with everything else. I feel like I know. maybe maybe do some teeth whitening. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I do all the like, same things. Pray that the skin stays good. Mm. Drink lots of water. I don't know. I, like as far as like the, the mind, getting the mind right. I don't know. I try not to get into like a hole about anything. I I try to just keep my wits about myself and be like, okay, you know what you want to say. You know how you feel. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Speak from your heart. Don't betray yourself. Okay. Stand your ground. I like love that's, that. That's Don't just betray kind of, yourself. Yeah. Just kind of just, yeah. I already know. Just, but the thing is, a lot of that goes out the window anyway, because you, you know, you get in there and you're kind of in the moment. Well, yeah. And you can't control what other people say. And right. I noticed that in scenes and even at reunions, Raquel literally I think she like writes down what she's going to say and you can tell because it never makes sense it's just because she's not thinking about what the rebuttal may be yeah so oh I think a lot of people prepare in in a lot of ways you know right. they like they're they're like in their notes app or something like ready with you know their their comebacks or what they want to bring up and it's like to me that just seems so like inauthentic and I don't know I try not to it's just like i lived it already we know i know what's coming so i'd right. rather just sort of react to what's being said and whatever questions come my way not be in my head and not be too prepared about things i don't know i wing everything yeah. because if i if i prep it always ends up bad you can't prep no do you know will you know going into the reunion how many parts if it's multiple parts they plan on it being or no no that's the fun of it because andy will always be like he'll do his sort of like wild lines of of like welcome back or join us for part two and then if he says part three then we're all like "Ooh, we're all like oh my gosh i can pay my rent and do some other stuff now <laughs> <laughs> yeah we find out literally that day if the day uh, of the reunion while he's while he's <gasps> delivering his sort of wild lines like that oh that's cool this is the first year that we are going to have a lot of episodes that we're gonna have to watch before the reunion because obviously we have to like the biggest thing is what people say behind your back right yes we lived it but I don't know what people said in their confessionals I don't know what people said when they filmed without me so we have to see all the episodes before we go into the reunion the reunion has not been moved we're only on episode six, six yeah. and it's next week. So we're going to have like eight episodes, six, eight or nine episodes yeah. to cram in a week. And I told <laughs> them, oh. when are we getting these? Because usually mm. we get them like the night before oh. and I need a good night's sleep. And if I watch <laughs> something like that before I go to bed, I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to replay everything in my mind a hundred times. So next week, I am going to be so chill. I told Jess, I don't want anything that's going to make me like tense next week. I just want to chill out. I got my spray tan happening. I just want, I may do like a little sound meditation. Uh -huh. Zen myself out. Do you think Raquel's coming to the reunion? Uh -huh. I think so. I mean, it. listen, it's in the contract. If you want, that's like, that's sort of like the button on things. Like if you miss it, you're done? I mean, I don't know if like you miss it, you're done, but I think it doesn't bode well. No, it does not. Like the only way you would not be able to go, listen, like I like I had COVID last year and I had to still like phone it in and I was sitting there shivering. My body was aching. Like I had a blanket on my lap. And no, I but it was gangster because <laughs> as the reunion went on, she's leaning back in her chair. You just start just to see me get over her lap. <laughs> yeah, like I started strong, but then just like as like the medicine was wearing off and as the day just progressed, I just I was like, oh, just I was just in a bad, bad way. Yeah. Should we plan a day to watch the episodes together? I think yeah. I need you for like <laughs> emotional and mental support. Yeah, I need something. If I, if I have to sit there and watch alone, I will like be spiraling because this is the first season that I can remember that I've had a hard time watching it back. Because normally, because people are like, is it harder to like watch it back? Or and I'm like, no, because I've already lived it. Like I know what to expect. Right. Yeah. Because even the, even what people say behind my back, I know I know the drill. I do it, so I don't. I don't really take it to heart because it's like I have to do the same thing. I know what goes into it. I know when I s go to my interviews and I'm sitting in the chair that like, that's just like par for the course. We have to be like a little snarky, you know. That's, yeah. That is what it is. I don't really take it 
too seriously. But this year, there was so much happening actually like throughout the actual season, not just in our interview bites, that I was really surprised by. Like I, um, and it was hurtful mm -hmm. and very disrespectful, I thought. So like that, it's been hard for me. Yeah. So, and I just know that there's so much more to come and it doesn't get much better. So I'm like, right. Jesus, like I'm going to need, <laughs> I'm going to need some emotional, emotional support. support. Yeah. I got yeah. your back. I'll be your emotional support animal. <laughs> It my, is. my blanket. <laughs> Thank you. It's interesting, though, because you guys have a lot of episodes, like you were saying, Lala, to watch before the reunion because you have different relationships now. I think it's like pretty apparent just off of our social media yeah. presence that even after just the regular season wrapped, friendships changed. But it was for me, like when I started hanging out with Sheena, there was a line in the sand if Raquel is there, even before this stuff happened, you will not catch this bitch around me. I don't like her. I don't like what she did to my friend Katie. Don't bring her around me. Then all of this shit happens and I'm like, oh my God. Thank God I did not give this hoe a chance to like mm -hmm. be in my presence and breathe my air. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So the last episode is obviously going to be about what's going on now because... Like Bravo said, we picked cameras up again, which has never happened ever. Do you go in with that energy, though? Because I've never been at a reunion filming. Do you go in, like, for instance, and Katie, you don't have to speak on this, but I feel like maybe your your relationship with Schwartz on the last day of filming might be different than how it is today. I don't know. Well, you can always go in with that energy that yeah. where like where you are today. I mean, that's kind of the what the reunion is about. Like cuz okay, you're yeah. you're coming together like where you stand today. I mean, you're talking about everything that happened, but but you can absolutely be in the place that you are today. You don't have to necessarily pretend that you are where you were 6 7 months ago. It can be yeah. like, nope, I'm Right, yeah. but it's interesting because you go in thinking like you're all good, but the second you have to start talking about the season, I don't know about you, Katie, it takes me right back to being in that place and I start getting amped up again and I start ripping mm -hmm. on bitches that I'm like, wait a minute, we're friends. <laughs> and then I just have to hope yeah. that they're strong enough to like when we leave, like high five. Mm. and go back you know <laughs> well, it makes me think of I just thought of Brock last year and you guys were in an okay spot when you went into the reunion but then yeah all hell broke loose yes it did so that <laughs> I mean I'm yes, like so kind of not much has changed okay. with me and people's Katie stays even killed <laughs> you know yeah. not many surprises with Katie Priceline presents go to your happy price What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself already there. It's beautiful. It might be sunny and sandy for some, neon and urban for others, deserts or rainforests or hiking trails. With Priceline, you can get to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. Like up to 60% off select hotels to Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to Priceline.com and travel to your happy place for a happy price. All right, see ya. I'm off to Miami. No, actually, wow, look at that. No, I I'm going to Hawaii now. Ooh, Cancun looks nice. You know what? Belize looks pretty nice this time of year. Or, mmm, Palm Springs. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Prime. Whatever you're into, with Amazon Prime, you can go deep. So if you're all about pop right now, you could watch pop documentaries on Prime Video, discover pop playlists on Amazon Music Prime. And if you're really serious, order a rhyming dictionary with fast free shipping from Prime. From shopping to streaming to saving, it's on Prime. Visit amazon.com slash prime to get more out of whatever you're into. What did you think about episode five? So last week's episode six airs tonight. It's uh, crazy. First of all, my mom was the MVP of the episode. Yeah. I was 100%. That 
but we all knew that that was going to happen. That's like not <laughs> I, a shock to anybody. I saw so many amazing like memes uh, on Instagram and I kept sending her to her, sending them to her because she was so nervous. She's like, before it aired, she's like, did I cry? Was it okay? Was I this? Was I that? I was like, you were great. You're great. Amazing. And, then, and awesome. people like, like just loved her so much. So that made her feel good because she gets nervous because she's like, I don't want to embarrass you. I'm like, you're never going to embarrass Aww. me. Mom. I'm like, no. So Tear bear. Um, but I, oh yeah. I mean, Listen, knowing it's it's hard because like knowing what I know now and even just like before any of this, mm-hmm. I look back on these episodes. I'm like, God, I was so nice to that girl. And, oh my and, God, and it's also like see, and seeing what she, and see how she was acting before we went on this trip, like standing in the kitchen with uh, Sheena and, and Schwartz. And she's just like, your wife is overreacting. I was like, bitch, I have a name. Mm. What do you mean your wife is overreacting? Like, this is how you're acting. But she was totally nice to my face and seemed to understand. And, you know, I was apprehensive, but but, but still trying to give her a chance because I was like, listen, you're single this summer. I'm single this summer. Like, let's try to make this like a girl squad of like us having a fun hot girl summer, all of us together. So I was really trying to give her benefit of the doubt and trying to get some kind of friendship off the ground with her. That's why I was being... And I feel like she was being very misguided. We felt that way that she was we getting really from the jump. shitty advice from people. So we were trying to take her under a wing and and we could see that she was a bit lost. So, and I, yeah, I wasn't trying to make it all about Sheena, but I really felt that like Sheena was just gunning for it. Yeah. And yeah, so again, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I just watch it and I'm just like, oh, Katie, you should have just mm. told her to stay home. <laughs> right. I mean, even Christina Kelly and I were like, are you for real right now? Like, are you really bringing this girl on the trip? Really? Yes. Yeah, they were. And I was just like, I just want, listen, I, I try to, I do this with people. And then until they, I just, I just know. And now once I know that I can't with them, then it's done. See, if I were you, yeah, yeah I'd it's look like a ba- mob boss. Yeah, I'd look back at that moment. I'd be so proud. I'd be like, I gave her every chance. I was so nice. Yeah. I was so kind. I would be. This is why this is why I can confidently say like, fuck you to her because yeah. <laughs> I gave you every opportunity. I was so kind to you when I didn't have to be, but I was. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you didn't like really step up or really appreciate that or recognize that and you just walked all over that and took a giant giant, giant dump on it like <laughs> like you're an idiot and i don't care i don't care what's mm-hmm. coming to you right now like uh, you deserve it absolutely yeah that's what is so crazy to me is that when people really fuck around and then there's repercussions they for your out. actions <laughs> yeah and they're they're like this isn't fair though and this shouldn't be happening and they try to like Take every avenue to make it make sense. And it's like this, you did this. No one did this to you, right? Mm -hmm. So are we sorry that we got caught or are we sorry that it happened? Now, obviously, I have my thoughts about Sandoval. I've always had these Mm -hmm. feelings. I feel like every time he's talking to me and telling me what I need to fix, I literally feel like he's talking to himself in a mirror. Yeah, it's always such a mind fuck because everything he says to me, I'm like, no, this is you. Everything you're projecting onto me is everything that you do and mm-hmm. possess. And finally, it's been exposed. And yeah. I am so glad that the episodes w- are not being edited to fit this new storyline. This was going to be the storyline no matter what. Mm. I think people w- would have just been more torn on how they felt. I think this, okay, this season was going to be wild and entertaining and no matter what, just, just blow your mind anyway. But watching it now is going to just be a, ugh, a treat. You know what I mean? It's like, that's that's what I'm excited about. It's like, now it's like going to be some kind of like Shyamalan twist yeah. on it. You know what I mean? Like that's it's just it's just have it has a whole different lens on it. But yeah, with Sandoval, I mean, I just feel like I never stood a chance with him. Um, he was always gonna find fault with me whenever I'd open up my mouth to talk about anything about how I felt, what what hurt me, what I was upset about. He'd just be like, well, Katie, what about that? Like the what about and the the, the 
just the constant blame game. I, you know, and then the, the nerve to always call me emotionally entitled. I'm like, emotionally entitled. That's interesting because, yes, we're all entitled to have emotions. But according to you, I'm not I'm not allowed, actually. Correct. Because the minute I start feeling anything or expressing anything, it's shut down immediately. And it's it's ripped apart. It's criticized. It's crucified. I'm cast aside like mm-hmm. it's just uh, like how how the hell am I emotionally entitled when I've never been justified my like my feelings and emotions have never been uh, respected or acknowledged or supported so Absolutely. how the hell ha- I want to know how I've like I'm so emotionally entitled and it's like ridiculous in his eyes but I feel like when you're well he's never gonna understand because he's a narcissist, know, obviously like, and I will never stop saying that but also, when you are in a marriage, you are both emotionally entitled, okay? You now have to accept everything that I'm feeling, and I have to accept everything that you're feeling. Mm-hmm. That's what a marriage is, which is why I will never get married. <laughs> well, no, no, I was talking about Tom Sandoval. I know, oh, but he but- will never understand that because he's not in that, he's never been in that type of partnership. Uh- <laughs> mm. Right. Well, but, well, he basically like him and Ariana. I mean, they their marriage or their relationship emulated that. I mean, being in a in a ten decade long almost relationship and owning a home, like. But he didn't often the same thing with Ariana. Like she would often express the way she felt about something, and it was like falling on deaf ears. Well, you guys were in very similar there was, situations. I know, and I I've told that to her. I was just like the the similarities were just profound mm. and I, I couldn't tell you that because that would be insulting obviously. I said it a lot <laughs> to I, her? well I mean no oh but who I'll wants watch what happened but, live but who wants to say like hey so you know that marriage I just ended because of all these things I see that <laughs> in your own relationship like I, I just but Katie yeah. not many women are strong enough like you to say, this is not what I want to be in. like, But it took can, a long time. It took a long time, Katie. But like, it was definitely the cherry on top when you said to him, like, this is what needs to happen or I have to, for myself, be done and move on with my life. But for me, for Ariana, even though it was so apparent to me that I was extremely unhappy in my relationship. Mm -hmm. He was my best friend, but I wasn't happy in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, did not feel that I could move on. I just didn't. Until something was in front of me where I didn't have a choice. Same with Ariana. Because I had been through it and now I was watching as an outsider, I was like, I so feel for her because this is how I was in my relationship. But Ariana, I was like, He's sucking the life out of her. She's yeah. a shell of a person. And until that happened, which well, I'm devastated for her, but it was right in front of her. There's no other option. Listen, just because there wasn't something like, I mean, there was tons of infidelity, obviously, but just because there wasn't like the like, a catastrophic event that happened, I still didn't feel like I had a choice. Like, a, like Well, I say what? that to people when they say you had a choice. No, you no, did not. Like the, well, you wanted this. No, I didn't. I didn't want this, but I, I recognized that I was rotting on the inside and right. I wanted to end that rot. I still was very much, I like, still very much loved him and wanted to be with him and wanted that life with him, but like it wasn't going to happen. So yeah. I had to be real with myself. The, the, the choice was to get real honest with myself and that's what I chose. You're right. There were a lot of things where it was like, okay, you fucked up again. Okay, you're not coming home and you're picking Sandoval. Yes, you're absolutely right. But I do admire your strength. That Thank something you. horrific didn't have to happen for you to get that strength. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just be honest. People stay in those – that's a lot of marriages, unfortunately, is people just settling because, like you said, it's comfortable and it's – you can just – Because it's, it's – you have to turn everything on its head and, you know, then all of a sudden it's like I'm moving out on my own and then I'm – unraveling my life from this person I've been with so long. I'm selling my house. I'm like this, everything that I thought I knew is just done and it's Mm going to be different now. And it's just like unpacking that so hard. And that's why, you know, I was struggling a lot when you see in the, like this, you know, these episodes that you're watching of like trying to navigate this friendship, friend space with Tom 
is so up and down and so mm-hmm. difficult. And that's why just it being so fresh and new, like we just moved out of our house like a month prior to this. So it's like, it is still fresh. Right. And I don't care that it was my choice and I shouldn't, I'm not dictating anything as life. Like, you know, we're trying to figure out how to be friends. We're trying to film this show together. We still have all the same like best friends. So let's not complicate it even further by, you know, hooking up with somebody that's also like right here in front of us. Mm-hmm. I like, and I know that's like, oh, well, who would you hook up with, Katie? There aren't any options. I'm just, well, yeah, you're right. But who knows? Someone could have stepped into the show or stepped into this group. There's a lot of people at the restaurants that are like hidden different that you could have hooked right. up with. Like just because you don't know exactly who, the, like there's people. There's people around, and, th- and that's who I'm speaking about. But yeah, so it's just like, let's not make it toxic. And it's like, just because people have done this in the past for so many years, well, we're not 26 anymore. Thank you. And Thank like, you. and Tom and I was like, we're not, he wasn't just some dude I dated. We were married and together for a really long time. And, and also like when people were doing that past, that wasn't fun for anyone. It was very awkward. It was very toxic. And Tom and I didn't want that for us. You know, we right. wanted to... I don't know, I th- oh, I thought we did, honor what we had and and try to, you know, lay some foundation for our friendship. So that's what this is about. He understood, like, I, this is what I need to be comfortable. Otherwise, it's going to make our friendship very hard, and I don't know if I'll be able to do it. So that's what it is. It's not me trying to control him. I'm just saying, like, I, won't, I don't know how we will be able to, like, maintain friendship if you were to start doing that because – that's how I'll feel about it. Well, it's called he can do whatever he wants. healthy boundaries. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying it's not like he didn't have, like the option was still there for him. It's not like, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I mean, and yeah, I was doing my own thing, but literally with people that no one knew and didn't see it and wasn't bringing it to his door and he was welcome to do the same. I'm really curious to see how people react will react to tonight's episode because I feel like tonight's episode is what really launches us into like the wild ride (laughs) you know yeah it's really funny but also I'm I'm just very excited (laughs) tonight is Vegas I mean I know there's like a rundown online Havasu we're now in Havasu we go to Havasu Lake Havasu yeah Ariana has left Mm -hmm. and so now it's Katie Lala Christina Raquel that's, That's it. it. The four of us. Oh, boy. I know. I may have to have you back on next week to break oh, yeah. it down. No, I love to talk about that. How did you feel about the Raquel and Oliver stuff <laughs> last week's episode? Can we just talk about what Disco Pussy was actually like? <laughs> oh, my God. Please do. There were, like, zombies there. Like, just the people on the dance floor, they were just, like, like uh, they look like they're just, like, half dead, honestly. No, literally, <laughs> Disco Pussy, them making out on the dance floor, it wasn't, like them making out with a bunch of people who were like dancing normal and canoodling and it was just like you know rihanna's diamonds is playing in the background no it was music that you cannot dance to just like random song like random beats people who came by themselves and brought their own lights and they were so fucked up on whatever (laughs) they were on that they were literally like zombies banging their heads and glow sticks like really close to their eyes. It was not a romantic oh, wow. situation. But I love the way they made it look. Mm, yeah. They it, made it look interesting. Why did you go there? Okay. Out of all the places. Uh, a lot of people want to know why we went to <laughs> Disco Pussy and why we chose Havasu. And I'm going to tell you why. We chose these two places because I felt that Katie was getting out of something she was very comfortable with. So I'm like, what can we do where it is so far out of our fucking norm yeah. and out of our comfort zone that we're kind of like a fish out of water? We were, and it was that. <laughs> it was very, definitely very that. fish out of water. Did you see, because I saw you talking to the, you and Christina were talking to a couple guys. Yeah. Were you interested in them or were you just like, it's fun? We had seen them outside and I think they were like, oh, where, where are those girls going in this place? Because they were very much like, what is this place? Yeah. They were, I don't, they, I think they were fish out of water too, but I they, think were, they were, you could tell. But I yeah. think they wanted, they were curious. Okay. So, but yeah, no, okay. they were, they were very sweet. They seemed sweet. Is that your type? Do you have a type, Katie? No. Okay. Katie doesn't have a type at all. No, okay. it is f- <laughs> like it's random. Okay. It's just like if I see and I like, then I like. Okay. Yeah, we've talked about like <laughs> dudes she's hooked up with and yeah. she'll show me and I'm like, wow, this one looks very different from the last one. 
in the last one. <laughs> and those two look very different too. And wow, we really don't have a type here. No. Uh-uh. No, but there's mm-hmm. not like something specific like a guy in a band. Does that like pique your oh, interest? Oh, for sure. Okay. But also a guy that's, I don't know. Throwing a football. <laughs> throwing a football. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or Sweet. a golf club. All of them. Playing a banjo. Well, <laughs> doesn't fucking matter. Selling insurance. Just like. Totally. Ma- yeah. Does not matter. <laughs> yes. Insurance man. He um, no. It, and he, he had does, a big. He had big shoe size too. Oh. You better get it girl. <laughs> <laughs> no. It doesn't like truly. Okay. Like, it's, I don't know. It, like listen. If the. I don't know. If you make me feel kind of some kind of way. Then you can look. I don't know. When the okay. cookie calls, you just answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right? It's just what you do. <laughs> By the yes. way, can I back myself up on the scene where I'm at Raquel's apartment and I'm like, we don't have the same type that of dude? That is so funny. Absolutely hysterical. Never, I do not recall ever making that comment about shorts. Literally, don't recall rem- it even the smallest bit. I remember, but I don't think you would you were like seriously wanting to. I think it was mostly it was mostly to get at me. It yeah. wasn't like that you truly wanted to. It was me being a drunk and see you next Tuesday. Schwartz, All was, right? Schwartz was definitely not your type. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, I know. But but can oh, I, wait, wait, but about Raquel, because I remember like, yeah, at dinner you you mentioned like all of us. So we're like, oh yeah, Lala, yes, yes, yes. But yes, can yes. I tell you, Raquel but, and I, drunk Lala and Raquel may have the same type. Okay. Sober Lala. And Raquel do not have the same. I do not have the same type. How I ever slept with James Kennedy, I will never fucking know. Okay. And I don't think it ever would have happened had I not been intoxicated. Yeah. At the I beginning. Hear you. Okay. I really don't. Uh, comfortability. Drinks and comfortability. I've always said that combination, you're gonna be sitting on someone's face. Yeah. You sure will be. <laughs> so Just how saying. did it work? Wait, though? did you guys were you guys all pushing like you're like this is Lala and Oliver have to get together and then she swooped well, in. Listen, sh- I know she wanted to get me out of my comfort zone and yeah. it was about like Katie divorce or whatever. But I also was like, Lala, like you're you're finally you're taking a trip, it's a girl trip, like you need to make out with someone too. So when she was like mentioned Oliver, like I got really excited for her. I would I didn't notice because I was unaware of like the point where she like tapped out of it because like I noticed Raquel was like parked right in between them I was like what is she doing that was strange like what is she doing like Lala like finally had some like interest in a guy like I wanted her to like have this moment as well but I didn't notice that there was a point where Lala like was like I'm not I'm out of this and when was that point well so Oliver we started talking he said he was separated and then he said he was they were working on their footing with co-parenting so I said Oh my God, like I'm in a custody battle right now. It's very intense. Now, keep in mind, when he said separated, that for me is a trigger and I want to say a red flag, but I was like, there's no way. Like it may be a trigger for me, but it's not really a red flag in this situation because we have a camera crew here. Who would lie about being separated on a show that's going to be televised nationwide? Mm. You wouldn't, okay? So... Raquel's parked in front of us. We go to the bar. She's like, you know, I'm kind of into him too. And honestly, at that point, just with the separated comment, and I just, I wasn't getting the, I have to let you smash. It more was like, I'm enjoying this conversation, but like, I ain't popping pussy for you. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't need to make out with you. It just wasn't, that wasn't my vibe. So when she said she wanted that, I was like, you should go for it. That's why I tell her, I think you're overthinking this. Just go in for the kill. I have no intention of doing anything like someone should. And you genuinely, it, it appeared that way. It didn't seem like you were like at all miffed by it or like put off like or jealous or anything. Like I could sen- sense that you were just like, I'm not feeling this anymore. No, I was. By but the I way, but I didn't if see I that was happen. trying to smash. No, you were talking to that cute guy. Yeah. If I was trying to smash, I promise you I would have said, back the fuck off. Bitch. No, you, she, she, this she wouldn't, mine. it wouldn't even mm-hmm. gotten to that point because you would have punted her out of the. No, the seat. 100%. If it was going that direction, I wouldn't have even needed to tell her to back off Mm -hmm. because my energy would have let him know we're doing this. Yeah. By the end of that, when Lala turns that shit on, you ain't going to see nobody else. (laughs) Okay. Did you look over, Katie, and see them making out? Were you like, what the fuck? Or you No, none of us did. I didn't, like, again, I was was very clueless. Like, I was... I was kind of into my own thing. Right, right. (laughs) We were all into our own thing. Yeah. We had no freaking clue. Also, Christina Kelly had to like 
basically forced me to go talk to those guys. I was very like shy, which I'm also like not like I I normally am, like very. I have no problem going up. It was the atmosphere, babe. It was the (laughs) atmosphere was was like not it. And also like, I think I just got shot like kind of, I've never been single on the show. And so that element of like doing like, you know, talking to guys with like cameras. I don't know. I was just like this. It's it's so much pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Ah, yeah. No, that gives me anxiety. By the way, Christina seems like a surprise, not surprisingly, but a great wing woman. Is yeah, she? Definitely. She seems like it. No, I was like, Christina oh, damn. is everything. She like goes up, she oh. talks, she was like taught like it was Triple great. Virgo sign. <laughs> Got a clear head, grounded, fun. Yeah. yeah. She's a good one. We're moving in a new direction, moving forward, and moving beyond smoking. We are Altria, and our companies are leading the way in moving adult smokers away from cigarettes by taking action to transition millions toward potentially less harmful choices as we move from being known as a tobacco company to being recognized as a tobacco harm reduction company. Altria is moving beyond smoking. Find out how at Altria.com. Stacking Benjamins with Joe and his good friend OG not only has great financial insight, it's laid back with humor too. Guest Raymond Barker, author of Invisible Trillions. The end of the post-war period, the ratio of executive pay to workers' wages was 20 to 1. Now, more than 350 to 1. Inequality will defeat the free market system unless we get it controlled and begin to reverse it. The Stacking Benjamin Show, available on YouTube or wherever you listen. No one hangs like Katie Maloney. I'll tell you what. <laughs> You're having fun. You're yeah. single. Yeah. When they you, said there's yeah. there's a guy sitting at this table, but he seems to be leaving. He looks like he's no, going to leave yeah, soon. Yeah, no, they're like, we have a table available, but there's a guy sitting at it. I'm like, what is, what is he like? Is he asleep or something? Yeah. Like, what is he like? What's, like what's some this deal? Old man. Yeah, like, I thought it was just yeah. like some old man who's just been there all night. And they're like, he's they're like, no, like, he seems fine. Like, he's actually really cute. And I was like, all right, let's go. And then we see this guy sitting at the table. I was like, oh, yes. I'm going to go ahead and just take that seat right there mm-hmm. uh-huh i was like well i was, got someone she's gonna be up with i think sophie's got a boyfriend situation yep we have so fun yes. maloney yeah by the way huh if we are so lucky to get a season 11 your you will have found your footing i will have found mine ariana's gonna have some downtime and She's right. We're going to paint the town fucking red. Mm. We're going to be painting the town fucking pussy pink, bitch. <laughs> but- <laughs> God. Pussy pink. Oh, my it's the Lord. prettiest, the prettiest of the pinks. All right. What are the questions? Katie, looking back with a fresh view, do you see a different slash earlier point you should have called it quits? Oh, that's a pretty good question. I mean, yeah, there's probably multiple times, but... I don't regret it. The similar to, you know, giving Raquel every opportunity and every, you know, you kind of want to ride it to the wheels fell off. You want to know that you did everything possible. You have to really wait till you get to that point that you're like, it's your breaking point. But yeah, there's, I, I, I don't think I would have done it differently. But yeah, obviously, like there was cheating. There was other breaking points of, of just being you know upset and and devastated you know but I just I I wasn't ready then I didn't I didn't get I didn't see see it for what it was until I saw it for what it was so I'm excited for people I've said this before to see Katie this season because she and I have the similar game face and like our words are very intense our presence is very intense but there's moments this season where you see Katie and how she's like vulnerable moments that I think are even tonight's episode. There's a very sweet moment. And I'm just really excited for people to see that. Like you really did, like you said, rock it until the wheels fell off. You know, you did mm-hmm. everything that you possibly could. Yeah. Mm. Proud of you, kid. Thanks. And that was from K-A-T-T-E-A-U. Sorry, Keto. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Kara Jane, one, two, three, one. Do you guys ever want to get married or married again? What do you want in life? What do you want, Katie? I want it all. But um, listen, I, I, I sit there and think like, I, I don't see myself ever like 
planning a wedding and doing that whole thing again. But I'm not opposed to to marriage. Just, you know, that's not it. I don't, I'm not like seeking that out. Again, if, if somebody's like, I really want to like marry you and I'm like love this person, I'd be like, okay, I'm down. But I don't know about the whole like wedding situation. That's, yeah. That feels just weird. Yeah. The wedding dress, the walking down the aisle. I'm just like, I don't know about that. With the bridesmaids and stuff. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, no. <laughs> no. Like, I, it's like, but like doing like courthouse or eloping, that would be fine. Okay. I love that. Obviously, I don't know what my future holds. I never thought that this is what my future would hold. But as far as like what I want, I am a lone wolf. I don't know that I want a partner. I definitely will never get married. I don't even know that I want a partner though. What? I think I, yeah. I've realized that all of my relationships that I've had besides like my high school sweetheart have always been long distance and like that works for me. I don't like someone around me all the time. I like to do my own thing. I would be completely happy buying a big old house Moving my mom and Easton into it, my gays, my best friends. Do you know And then what? just bring in Dick when I need it. <laughs> I know that sounds horrible. Also no, having and just having a sperm donor. Now that like you to give me kids. I feel like now that you're like you're like this is this is what it is. You're gonna meet somebody and you're <laughs> it's gonna completely change. That's yeah. usually how it works. That's I, totally like how it works. Like, yeah. Like you know what? I don't need anyone. I don't want anyone. Like this is what I want for myself. And there's somebody that's gonna, like the universe is gonna be like, oh yeah, <laughs> send them in. <laughs> <laughs> rock her world i just feel so happy i no, love that's great. just being no, that's, on my own but this means that you like have found like the love for yourself and the happy like you you're good that's like where everyone should really strive to be thanks katie yeah yeah happiness just on your own happiness i'm mm-hmm. sheer you happy you're not looking for it like in a partner with anyone else you're like i'm good on my own like that's that's like the that's the dream that is the dream. That is the dream. I'm living the dream right now. You're living the dream. Yes. You are your biggest love. Okay, Sid Fried Rich. Give us some specialty sandwich ideas inspired by slash for something about her. Can I just say this what? very quickly? We had the sandwich tasting. Mm. That you'll see You'll later. see at the very end of the season. Katie, I can't get them off of my <laughs> mind. They're they so are good. the most fantastic sandwiches I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're not like these, like the most innovative, like out of the, like the box kind of sandwiches, but we really wanted to do, you know, sandwiches that are kind of classics, ones that you've had before, but do them well and kind of elevate them in ways, whether it's like through a spread or... Uh, you know, adding a little spice or something, you know, just like oh some gosh, kind of something to them. Like whether it's like a spicy like pimento with like a turkey oh, kind of situation, maybe some jalapenos in there, oh. just to kind of punch it up a bit. And it's really interesting because there's one that for most people that, you know, when they would go to order a sandwich, they would get something, whether it's like a, like I love a soppressata or they get a turkey or like some kind of like meat option. But the one that killed the most was the the... Uh, the Greek salad sandwich. Like, oh, that was like that the, was like a crowd favorite, which was like so interesting because it's all like it's vegetarian. We had three, right? There was the spicy turkey, the sopressata, the the vegan one, the green. That one, one was really good too. And then so there was four. So and then the the Greek salad. That's right, because we had the Greek salad one at the actual space, and yeah. it was hitting sounds- all the <laughs> spots. Yeah, so Delicious. it's just gonna be about like having a really great bread which you know we we haven't settled on like what kind of like breads just yet you know but but getting like the the ingredients of the the innards just mm. yet you know what i mean but are you guys gonna have soup i don't know we, we we're thinking about some like seasonal salads i think having like a soup like a nice like i love i like go hard on like a butternut squash and like a Ooh. or like a good like i love like a bone broth oh. like a turmeric bone broth would be really beautiful especially for like fall like i think that's like a cozy thing to have on the menu but what about names do you guys have names yet no like we thought about doing i thought something so cute for just um to play into something about her yeah because i thought it'd be like you know the naming things about her you know this whatever you know her is to you but like her laugh or like her you know i love smile okay i have chills 
but that, we, that could be either like for like the drinks that we have or the sandwiches or you know something like that but like i think that could be a fun idea that's so stinking cute that's right? so cute i love that katie you have to do that yeah her that's charm amazing. her whatever like the, oh. the things that just like add up to making the, the, the things about her you know <gasps> Yeah, her. Goosebumps. Up I know. To piggyback on that, I mean, we have a ton asking, when will something about her open? Do you have a date for something about her? Is it all just like TBD? You'll it's, make- I mean, yeah, it's still TBD. Okay. Ari and I are meeting with interior designer. Ooh. Tomorrow. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, but it's like, we're like, we are like, we're like, it's, we're making it, making it happen. I mean, like I said, we, we wanted to be very intentional and, really thought out with everything that we've done especially with the the the, the pre-opening stuff the, the budget and all of these things getting all the ducks in a row because um it's not just about getting a location and throwing up some you know paint and getting some tables and chairs in there and just start you know throwing sandwiches out it's like there's a lot of pre-stuff like when we work to these consultants they're like no it's it's like at least a year of of this stuff before you even work into that and then you know sometimes it can take a long time to find a location and you have to like build out a location like it's it's not often that you just 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 well, get it's not it some in. chain restaurant that's yeah. moving in you know it's it, like that already has it's it already has the the you know Right, you're you're starting the, from scratch. the blueprint. Yeah, yes. like we we're building our blueprint so that way, like if we want to do another location, we already got the blueprint. We can already, you know. But it's like we we're that's why we want we want to people when when they do see it when they do open it, they're gonna be like, wow, like no, I get it. We get, we see it now. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, but it's just it's taking a lot of like prep work. Yeah. Well, you're Amazing. ensuring success. I'm so excited I know. for it's it. It's just, I was seriously on the way over here. The amount of times that people ask me, like, they're like, so why sandwiches? As if it's the most obscure thing ever. And I'm just like, do you, do you not like sandwiches? They're like, no, I love sandwiches. I'm like, exactly. Like, I'm not opening up a magic shop. Like, like that would be weird. I I would expect people to, like, ask about that. But it's like, this people eat sandwiches, like, every, every day. Every day. Like, multiple times a week. Like, it's, again, like, it's, like. <laughs> that is very true. It's, like, not some, like. Wow. I'm not, I opening, I'm not opening yeah. like something called like, like socks, socks, and socks. Like that, like it's it's a sandwich shop. Like it's epic. Like it, like I don't know. It's like it's a coffee shop. It's yeah. like, I mean, I guess, would it be it's like more surprising if I was opening a magic shop? I don't know. But like, I think it would be I, I, less like, surprising if you were opening up like a witchery shop. <laughs> People would be like, definitely. Crystals. No, I know. Okay, I guess because it's like you don't look at me and think like sandwiches, but it's like, sandwiches aren't that obscure it's just like I, i'm not opening up a restaurant and like because that's that's a full-scale thing that's that is a massive undertaking sandwiches like it's easier it's, it's what i want to do every day is go to a cute sandwich shop and chill and, and have like an iced tea yes. with a lemon and right? a sandwich and yes. so so why wouldn't yeah. i want to like open that and like be like feel like i'm like the main character of a rom-com i don't know i think you're a genius to be honest <laughs> <laughs> okay so j felix 6792. Ladies, tips for dating in your 30s with like a... Oh, this is a great one. (laughs) What are your tips? Have fun and don't take it too seriously, I think. Like, you don't have to be out there trying to find, you know, your husband or your partner. I think date all ages, age ranges. I knew she was going to talk about age. Like, honestly, like, no, I, I think it's just indulging in those things to make, you know, just, I don't know. It, I think I think 30s are such like an interesting and cool and special time in your life. Right. And I think while dating, you should kind of honor and explore like this time. And, mm-hmm. and I think so. And I think just having fun. Yeah, I think that's just I don't know. I agree. <laughs> like 30s is OK. Yeah. Basically 20s. You know, Kim K made it cool to be in your 40s. Mm-hmm. J-Lo made it cool to be in your 50s. Like, I can't wait for all stages of life. <laughs> Yeah. But, like, honestly, just go out and have fun. Like Katie said, don't take it too seriously. Don't worry about the age. I think you go out. I will say, I think you protect yourself at the beginning. Don't give up too much too quickly. Let the other person do all of the talking, mm-hmm. you know, kind of keep a little bit guarded. Start making your notes. Because if there's anything that you see that's not really working out, you want to be able to, like, go out. And even though you're not taking it too seriously, you still want to enjoy yourself. And if there's little things you're seeing where it's like, this would never work, don't waste your time going out again. Well, I mean, going out and dating is not necessarily like, okay, well, 
is this going to be a relationship? Like, treat it as like you might never see this person again. So just enjoy. But babe, most people are going moment. out and they're dating because they're looking for their life partner. Well, I know, but if that happens, then great. Like, it's either going to happen or it's not. So just enjoy the moment. Totally. Like, stressing about it isn't going to change it. You know, like they're, 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 if they're going to call you, they're going to call you. I also think they're going to call you if they're going to call you, even if you let them hit the first night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like they just are. Yeah. Like men are very simple in that sense. If they like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. And I don't think like how things go down is going to factor into that. Yeah. I actually think it's like the universe intervening if you sleep with him and he doesn't call again. It's like, well, I'm glad that that one was checked off the list and crossed off at the same time. Move on. You know? Move on. At least you got a good lay. On to the next. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. All right. My question for you is what are you – most excited for people to see this season that we know is coming up that hasn't aired yet. A moment that you don't tell too much about. <laughs> Mine's tonight in the hotel room in Vegas. Oh God. I've been looking forward to this. That yeah, so this, much. this one is this is like this episode tonight is pretty good. I think it might be next week. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, Lala, yeah, Lala meets a guy. That one's really good. And then also, I think, um, oh my God, there's so much, I think. I'm also kind of like forgetting some things. I think I kind of turn a a corner too. Like, I think you're seeing like angry Katie a lot because I'm pissed off at people, but I think I kind of just, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I've said it in a million and one podcasts that I am so excited for to just like watch you. I'll be honest, I had to go back and watch episodes one through five again because I fast forward through anything that has to do with the Toms. Like if a Tom appears in a scene, I'm fast forwarding it. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's so boring. But now I have to watch because I need to know what they're saying and I need to see behavior. But um, no, your storyline I'm so excited for. I cannot wait for it. I think and the it. whole reason I'm most excited for tonight's episode is because of the way you, the things that you, you said. It's oh just God, very, wait. very amazing. <laughs> Katie's a fucking savage. Anyway, <laughs> I love you, Maloney. Thank you for doing my podcast today. I love you. Thanks for having me. We'll, I'll come back next week and we can talk about all the things we couldn't talk about. Yay, I can't wait. All right, my loves, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast, and I will catch y'all next week. If you miss Bob and Tom in the morning, don't worry, because you can catch the Bob and Tom podcast all day whenever you want. I mentioned that when I was a kid, I went to something called the Grotto Circus. I bought a chameleon from a guy walking up and down the aisles like he would have a tray full of beers, and you scoffed at that. I got this from Greg. My grandparents would take me and my brothers to the Shriner Circus selling chameleons. This would have been in the early 70s. I think the days of the uh, boxed chameleon probably over. Uh, yeah. The Bob and Tom Show podcast, wherever you listen.